Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello and welcome to our today's lesson, History and Government. We are learning about the establishment of colonial rule in Kenya. That is the topic that we are learning. And uh, we have uh, been learning about the uh, Kenyan society's response to the process of colonization by the British. And just as a matter of uh, remembrance and overview of what you have already covered, is that we mentioned that the European or the, Afri uh, the Kenyan communities reacted in different ways towards the uh, invasion by the British in, the, in, their, in their territories. What are these ways? Which are these responses that the Kenyan communities instituted against or towards the British? Are you able to remember them? We said uh, there are three ways in which or there are three responses that the Kenyan communities uh, responded to the process of European colonization in Kenya. What are these three ways? He said, number one, they resisted. There was resistance. They came up in arms against the British occupying their land. Some of the communities that resisted include what? The one that we are studying, that is the Nandi. Which are the other communities that resisted? We mentioned that in our introductory lesson. We said the other one uh, is the Agriyama. We also mentioned the Bukusu and the Somali. Apart from resistance, which was the other method? We said number one, we have resistance. Number two, which is the other response that the Kenyans uh, gave uh, towards the British? The other one was collaboration. Very good. They collaborated or cooperated or accepted the rule in exchange of protection and other things. And in the, there are two communities that collaborated with the British in Kenya. That is the Maasai and the uh, Wanga that is in among the, uh, the Western Bantus. Also, uh, there was a third response which we classified or which we called the mixed reaction or mixed response. That is, portion of the community was collaborating with the British while the other was resisting. Or initially, uh, they collaborated and later on decided to resist. An example are the Agikuyu. So those are the responses and that is what we are tackling. But now in our today's lesson and uh, under the Nandi resistance, in our previous lesson, we looked at the factors or the reasons why the Nandi resisted uh, the British rule and we mentioned and discussed them in detail. And then in our last lesson, we also discussed the cause, how they fought, what initiated the war, how they fought against the British and the expeditions that were sent by the British against the Nandi. And we also uh, uh, outlined and discussed the reasons or the reasons, the factors that made the Nandi to put up a prolonged resistance. Remember we said they started their resistance in 1895 and that resistance lasted up to 1905 when they were finally defeated by the British. So we mentioned the reasons why they put up such a prolonged uh, Resistance. Are you able to remember the reasons why they resisted for quite a long time? The reasons uh, included uh, the terrain that they were living in. The mountainous terrain was well known to the Nandi warriors. But the British who had come with their weapons that needed to be moved around could not adapt to that terrain. So the terrain uh, encouraged them to use guerrilla warfare. They could attack then go and hide in the mountains and the hills so the British could not advance against them. Uh, apart from that, they had a sense of pride. They were not easily going to give up 
to foreigners coming to take up their land. Apart from that, they had a very strong and able leadership that was provided by the institution of the Orkoyot. And the Orkoyot at that time was Koitalel Arab Samoe. You should remember that. So this man provided direction. He organized the army. He organized the community to fight against the British. Which other factors uh, enabled or led to the Nandi putting up a very uh, strong uh, resistance or a prolonged resistance for quite some while? The other one was military experience they were able or they had been involved in other kinds of war with their neighbors. So these enabled them to continue fighting and they had amassed a lot of experience. Their warriors were experienced to fight because that was a norm to them. They could raid their neighbors at will. They could raid the Gusi, they could raid the Luo, they could raid the Nandi, the Maasai because they were quite a strong uh, a strong um, people and they were they were well trained apart from that they had a very large army a very large supply of army that each and every time they they were men who were ready to fight on behalf of the community also they had a steady supply of food such that even when the british employed the strategy of scorched art policy that is the burning down of the crops of the nandi and killing some of the animals because of the vast nature of the, uh, the, the the livelihood or the economic strength of the Nandi, they were able to have a steady supply of food. So they are they are they are warriors were well fed and they were strong. And then finally, we also discussed uh, the impact or the impact of the climate on the British. They could not be able to sustain or they could not be able to fight effectively because. The climate uh, uh, in the highlands was quite cold and they could not be able to, uh, to, to resist the diseases, the tropical diseases that attacked them. So those are some of the reasons why the, British, uh, the Nandi were able to give such a prolonged resistance. So in our today's lesson, we are going forward to uh, learn what are the factors or the reasons that led to them being defeated, the factors that led to them being defeated, that is one. And then number two, the results of the, their resistance against the British. So allow me to start with the first uh, part, which is uh, uh, reasons. Or you can refer to that as factors for their uh, defeat. And when you talk of their defeat, uh, let me write the... Nandi, right? The Nandi defeat. Why were they defeated? Re the factors that contributed to them being defeated. The first one is that um, some African communities, some African, some African communities. Uh, supported supported the British an example are the Maasai that were conscripted by the British and they helped the British to fight against the uh, the Nandi remember the Maasai were traditional rivals of the Nandi the Nandi uh, constantly uh, raided the Maasai community so with that hatred, the Maasai joined up together with the, uh, with the British to fight against the Nandi. So that contributed to the Nandi being defeated. Uh, actually, this happened in 1905. You should not forget that. So apart from the Maasai, we also had the Somali. We also had the Somali that also uh, took part in uh, helping the British to fight against the Nandi. Even uh, 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 as, as such, other communities around the, uh, the Nandi did not come to support the Nandi to fight against the British. An example is the Luya community. It did not come to aid or support the 
Nandi as they fought against the against the the British. That is the first reason. Some African communities uh, supported the British, while other communities, right, while other communities did not come to support the Nandi. So you can imagine if other communities could join in arms together with the Nandi, they could have easily defeated the British. But now, because that was not the case, that brought them to. Uh, they, 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 it resulted to them being defeated. Then uh, the other reason or the other factor was the uh, the British had superior the British had superior superior weapons. The British had superior weapons. The Africans or the Nandi were using rudimentary arms. They used arrows, they used daggers, they were using spears. As opposed to the British who were having uh, rifles and machine guns. The Nandi were using spears. They were using arrows. So, they did not, they are uh, compared, comparing between a spear and a gun or a machine gun. Which one is likely to, uh, to, to outdo the other? That is why the Nandi ultimately were defeated. Because the armies or the British army had superior weapons compared to those of the Africans. The Africans had not... Uh, amassed the technology of of uh, creating guns. Remember, even uh, as we are talking uh, at, uh, during this period, there were no industries of producing uh, arms in the Kenyan uh, territory. So that made a contribution towards the uh, Nandi being defeated by the uh, by the British. Apart from the superior weapons that uh, they had. Uh, there were natural calamities. There were natural calamities. There were natural calamities that influenced or made them to be defeated. An example is the rinder pest. The rinder pest is the rinder pest that attacked their animals and led to most of the animals dying, thus making them to lack food so when they were attacked by this pest they were unable to sustain the economy they were also attacked by smallpox smallpox this is a disease that they did not have initially so when they were attacked by this disease it weakened most of them and most of uh, the warriors were affected. They could not effectively fight. So the natural calamities that came. This, this is not a, a result of the British. It was just a natural occurrence that really affected them. And it uh, interfered with their way of uh, fighting or, or with their way of going against the, uh, the, the British. Let us take a step further and look what are the other Factors number four. The next factor number four is the British uh, used the scorched. The British used the scorched earth policy. This is where, or this is this uh, involves the British uh, going to, or after they have attacked the Nandi at one place, they could come down and burn down. They could burn and destroy the crops and the animals that had been left by the Nandi while they were running away. Remember, the Nandi were using the guerrilla warfare. They would come and attack the British and then run away from their homes to go and hide in the mountains, to go and hide in the forest. So, these they left their homes unattended to. So when the British came together with their collaborators, they would burn down. They would burn down their crops. They would destroy their silos. They would destroy their granaries. So when the Nandi came back, 
they were unable to get food. So the scorched earth policy to some extent also contributed to weakening the defense or the resistance by the Nandi. And uh, ultimately they were defeated. And then lastly, or the last factor that made them to be defeated was the death. The death of Koitalel. Arab Samuel. The death of Koitarel Arab Samuel. So this is uh, this uh, was the leader or the or coyote. He was the or coyote at that time. And remember, the or coyote was a very essential uh, person in the uh, Nandi community. He was the overall leader. He was, uh, it was the institution that uh, brought together the members of the Nandi community. So they, they are our coyote, who was at that time known as Koitarel Arab Samoy, was tricked by the colonel of the, uh, of the, uh, the British and was captured and eventually killed. So that demoralized. It demoralized. It demoralized the warriors it demoralized the warriors so the warriors could not uh, mount up uh, an effective attack against the uh, the british as they had done under koitarel because koitarel was the spiritual leader and he also led the community in its uh, in its wars or in its expeditions against the enemies so these weakened or it made them to lack uh, direction the leaders who took over control after the death of Koitarel of Samoy could also not match up the organizational skills of Koitarel Alap Samoy. So the death of Koitarel of Samoy was, uh, we, could, we could conclude that, was uh, the final uh, nail to the, uh, to the coffin of the, uh, the resistance of the Nandi because they were now unable to effectively fight against the Nandi. So these are some of the reasons that contributed to them being ultimately defeated. And as we mentioned in our last lesson, they were defeated in uh, the year 1905. So now that they have put up a fight, they have fought against uh, the British and they have finally been defeated. What were the consequences? What were the results of the uh, resistance? So let us take a step further and look at the results. The results. The results of the Nandi resistance. The results of the Nandi resistance. What were the consequences? What were the outcomes of the resistance against the British? Number one, loss of life. Most of the warriors lost their lives as they resisted the British. Remember, the British are using superior weapons, the machine guns and the rifles, the repeater rifles. So, these led to most of them losing their lives. It is estimated that thousands of, uh, of uh, around a thousand of uh, warriors lost their lives during that period of their uh, resistance. There was a lot of loss of life. Most of their, li uh, of their lives were lost during the resistance. And then number two, they lost their land. Loss of land. So the fertile land, the land that was very fertile, that was producing the food they were using, was now taken over by the British. So they lost their land to the British, ultimately, because now they have been defeated, they cannot continue to, uh, to, to occupy that land. So the British came and took over the, the land. And while they were taken, or the, their land was taken up, the Nandi, were pushed, were pushed 
into reserves. The Nandi were pushed into reserves. Most of them, because now their fertile land has been taken away for the British settlers, the Nandi were now forced to move into the less productive land. And others were even left to become squatters in the land that the British were living in. So that was another consequence. The fourth one is that they lost their prestige. They lost their lost their influence or prestige. They lost their influence. Remember the Nandi were the expendables in the in the in the in that area at that time. They believed they could not be defeated. But now that the, the British have, have come and have finally defeated them, they now lost their influence in the region. They could now not be feared the same way they had been feared uh, before. Let us look at the, some other uh, results or uh, some other results of, uh, of uh, the Nandi resistance. So the fifth one, most of the Nandi warriors conscript, were conscripted, conscripted, into British service. Now, because of their military skills and their ruthlessness, the British conscripted or forced uh, the Nandi warriors to work as police, as policemen, and also to join into the army. So they were now able to work under the British uh, government and also uh, they lost their independence they lost their lost their independence they lost their independence and then uh, uh, lastly they were displaced they were displaced they were displaced uh, from their uh, original areas of occupation. So to, as the, 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 the British advanced and took over their land, the British or the Nandi people were displaced into other areas. Some of them had to move away from their uh, home. So those, those are some of the results or the consequences of the Nandi resistance against the British. And uh, uh, and uh, now I would give you a revision question as we end our lesson. Remember, we have been discussing the reasons why uh, the Nandi resistance was defeated and the results of the uh, resistance. So revision questions. I'm going to give you two questions. And the first question... The first question is discuss the reasons why the Nandi resistance was subdued and then number two explain the consequences of the Nandi resistance against the British. Number one, discuss the reasons why the Nandi resistance was subdued. And number two, explain the consequences of the Nandi resistance against the British. And I'm sure those are the very easy questions that we, we have effectively tackled in our today's lesson. Thank you for having uh, time to 
study with me. Until the next time, we shall meet for a history and government lesson. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.